I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. I also would like to thank all the Phosphorus volunteers for their contributions to our community. Hello, I am Hannah Dermido. I am a graphics reporter and cartographer for the Washington Post. I see myself as a few things. I am a full-time journalist, a part-time mermaid because I will be where the water is, and a QGIS resource in training. My talk for today is how cartography chose me. So I will use my uh, QGI sorceress in training persona. Sorceress because I feel like mapping and maps are magical and it will always be that for me and I hope it never changes. And in training because I feel like whether it be QGIS or something else, there's always, always something new to learn. So why is it titled Cartography Chose Me? I am a journalist by background and training. I do not have any GIS background in school, so I came into this world basically knowing nothing. And you can only imagine how intimidating that can be. But I am still here and I am thriving and I feel like I am contributing to the wider community and the conversations that we are having to better the community that we have. And how did I get here? It started in 2017. Well, let's backtrack a bit. So I was at the Financial Times in 2012, and that's where I started learning, doing data viz and mapping. But I didn't have a community that I belonged to then until I moved to Bloomberg in Hong Kong around 2016. And this is when I started being more active on social media, specifically on Twitter, looking for GIS hashtags. And I stumbled upon QGIS Australia user group. And I think I just raised my hand by tweeting and asking, do you know if the, there are communities in Hong Kong or you know, somewhere closer to me that I can attend or be part of? And at that point, we were not really sure, but they extended an invitation, invitation to me and said they were willing to adopt me um, even if I was in Hong Kong, if, you know, if I wanted to join the community. And for me, that was life-changing. And I decided to hop on a plane and join the meetup in Australia in 2017. And I knew them, I knew the members just by their Twitter profiles. <laughs> But when I got there, people were warm, people welcomed me, people talked to me and asked me questions of, you know, what I do, where I come from, what do I like, what do I want to know? And that was a good feeling. It made me feel like I was being welcomed into a community of experts. And honestly, I felt like I was an imposter because I was clueless about mapping and GIS and the phosphor Z community like I didn't know what it was I didn't know what it did what people did I didn't know about contributors and all these things so I came in with you know the willingness to learn and and people were kind to me and for me that's that made me stay like cartography chose me but the people, the community made me stay. Um, and then in 2018, I attended the Phosphor G SOTM in Melbourne and I shared my story of how I used QGIS, how I got here, how clueless I am <laughs> in a lot of things, and you know how I felt like I'm not a cartographer, I was pretending to be a cartographer. And you know what, there was a conversation that stuck with me that I think was with Tim during one of the breaks. And he said, you are a cartographer um, and you should own it. And at that moment, I was like, if this person who's an expert and who's been doing these things for a long time tells me that I am a cartographer, then maybe I am. And that stuck with me, but 
I didn't really still believe that I was a cartographer, um, but it was, it, it started that, you know, little voice in my head saying, hey, you know, you do all these things, maybe you are. So I lived in Hong Kong, but I kept flying to Australia to attend meetups and conferences. And the question is why? And sometimes you forget that the most basic things mean so much to people who are new to a community or even to people who have been in the community for a long time and just feels like either they're overlooked, underappreciated, or feel like, you know, they're not good enough. And the reasons why I endured like spending money flying from Hong Kong to Australia, being on a plane for nine hours, uncomfortable nine hours, um, just to be part of the community in Oceania was because people showed me kindness. There was a sense of openness, like people were willing to open the community to me, a community of experts. And they did not make me feel like I was not good enough or that I had no place because I, you know, I was learning things and that I did not have the background that everyone else had. And sometimes you forget how important that is. Um, I also felt respected. I respect, I felt respected even if, again, I come from a different background. People saw that I was willing to learn, that I had questions, that I was willing to become part of the community and they gave me the respect that they give peers who you know studied these things in school and have you know high de higher degrees in the subject and i only have a journalism degree and i do not have like specialized degrees for for gis i also felt supported like every time i have questions or i have maps like even when i was starting out like even if they were not the best maps i would tweet them and people people were helpful if they spotted something that can be improved they said it with kindness if they saw something they liked they would let me know that it's something that they like um if i did something wrong people would message me in private and said would say you know this is how it's supposed to be done um you know, next, next time when you do something like this, this is the best practice. And they always said it with kindness. Um, and I know I keep coming back to that, but in the world of, you know, social media, sometimes we forget that, you know, one wrong word or, you know, a tone that can be misread affects a newbie mapper or an aspiring mapper. I also just felt accepted. I felt accepted as a female, as an Asian woman, and as a cartographer. And I think after I left that conference in Melbourne, I would always try it out and say like, I'm a cartographer. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't have really thought of it if people in this community did not support me. Um, so I think I just want to highlight the importance of community and how if we open the community to others, we learn more. I know I do not come from a GIS background or a mapping background, but I believe I do help our community improve and foster and I can provide a different perspective um, based on my own experiences, not just as at work, but as you know, a Filipina woman and as an Asian, as a journalist. Um, so I hope this is a reminder um, or this will serve as a reminder for us who are in the community to please be kind, please be open to people who are willing to learn Let's show respect, not just to people who's, who's done this for a long time, but also to those who are trying it out. Um, let's be encouraging. Let's support them. Let's support learning. And let's accept them in our community. 
um, and ho hopefully there will be you know a nurturing kind of environment where we help each other out we take care of each other and that leads me <laughs> to my final point that I would love to leave with you to think about and consider um, this were taken from a slides presented by David Garcia in the State of the Map 2020 conference. And this is um, something that the Ministry of Mapping, a collective of you know, Filipino mappers, tried to live by. Keratography, it's easy to remember. It's really putting care into cartography. It's a code of kindness we take care of each other and we take care of ourselves and we take care of the community that we serve cartography is a belief a lifestyle that highlights the importance of the map maker over the maps or the mapping tasks so we take care of each other and we help each other out. It is also a belief that the community being mapped is more important than the map maker or the maps and the mapping combined. So we respect the relationship of the community with their land. That take, takes precedence over our own personal interests. Also, it's, it's part of this is that there shouldn't be rock stars in cartography. And by rock stars, I mean people who think that they are better than everyone else and make you feel that they are. In reality, there will always be you know, a better map maker than you are, a better person than you are in terms of skills and stuff like that. And, and that's all right. But what's not all right is when we use that status and that skill and that expertise to exclude others or to make ourselves more important than fellow mappers. And being someone who's relatively, you know, I'm, I'm new to the community, I've been a few years in, I feel like I am in a very privileged position to actually share with you how you know how kindness and openness and respect um, helps someone like me like changes my life so now I have learned more skills as a mapper I am active in whatever mapping community there is I actually do humanitarian mapping as well because I feel like this community made me a better person and I want to pay it forward and honestly I also gained skills I gained friends I gained a community I gained a family by being here and that helped me land a dream job at the Washington Post as a cartographer so imagine how that kind of support that I've been getting from all places has built me up as a person and has helped me in my career and has helped me reach my dreams. So the next time we deal with someone who's asking questions, a newbie in the community, please remember like cartography, kindness. You will change someone's life. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. And I am Hannah Dormido.